Okay guys, on this episode we're going to show you the uh, progress of the VX. It's come a long way from putting the fuel cell in, the 9 inch diff in, getting the engine dynoed, bringing it back here and installing it in the car. It's over at the exhaust place at the moment, getting a new exhaust put on it. Once that's done, it will get uh, taken to the dyno once again to get dynoed in the car and finally be finished. So um, we'll show you what we've done along the way to get it to this stage. Uh, the wiring harness, um, setting up the intercooler, the fans, uh, the radiators, uh, brake lines, power steering, um, all that sort of stuff, all that sort of exciting stuff. So we'll show you what we've done and hopefully next week the car should be back here finished. Fingers crossed. All right, let's go check it out. Got some of my goodies from the little excursion today. Got solid state relays. Some other various electrical stuff. These are the fuses that we're going to run. There are a modular Bosman fuse, MIDI fuses, good for high amperage flow. These solid state relays require a heat sink, and all I've done here is just made up a nice aluminium plate that can get a bit of airflow flowing underneath it and that should be fine for the job. So I've got most of the wiring in. It's not really as neat as I'd like, but um, like I was saying earlier, there's a good chance this car will end up with either a Holly or a more up-to-date GM management system in it, just because it runs the very early LS1 uh, system. Requires crankshaft position converters and camshaft position converters. Uh, also, you can't run E85 directly off it, as far as I'm aware, uh, with a, a E85 sensor. Um, so, you know, six months or so down the track, probably going to get a management system change anyway. So we've got a few things left in the wiring to connect up, like the alternator and the fans, and then the new water pump and the electric uh, power steer pump. But for now, I'm gonna go under the car and try to button up as much as many things under there as we can. Let's get to it. Take 674,526 due to noisy traffic. Right, one thing that we hadn't really planned on doing that we're gonna to have to do is we have to put an extension in our fuel lines. It's never really a great thing. Um, but aside from completely rerunning the fuel lines, the full length of the car, which is good by the time it would count return and supply, we're looking at about 12 meters of braid. Um, you know, maybe 10 at the least. So it's not exactly a cheap process. And we ran these before we even decided on putting the nine inch and four link conversion in. And they were run with the old IRS suspension in the car still. So when we came to put the nine inch in, we realized that they were gonna be uh, in the way and then they were too short to reroute. So what we've come up with is a joiner and simply just hose tail to male instead of the hose tail to female. So we, we end up using two of those and just allows us to join straight into the the, um, the hose and then put a new section on. So we've got our fuel lines connecting up here and obviously 
wherever these finish up. So it's gonna find a new, better location for them to route and away from the wheel, away from anything that really moves and try and keep it away from any heat sources as well. But we do have the, the heat sleeve on here for some heat protection anyway. So let's try and find a new route for them. So we've got the fans already on the radiator connected up. It's a little bit easier to have it uh, already put on once you slide it in. So we've just dropped the radiator in with the fans on it. And as you can see, you probably got about 10 mil, maybe 12 mil. So it fits in nicely. There's enough room to get down to work on anything down the bottom that you need. The radiator hoses fit in nicely. It'll obviously come out of here, swing around into here. Uh, it sits in the holes that we tapped out. Now these holes are actually the uh, bottom of the um, air conditioner radiator that we've widened. The rubbers fit in there nicely and there's also as I said there's also plenty of room under here if you want to put your radiator for your air conditioner back in. So I'll go ahead and put the uh, intercooler on now and show you the gap that you've got also. Coolers in now. As you can see, we've cut it out just so it sits forward slightly. The crash bar, but also you can see that there's plenty of room down the back there for your radiator on your aircon if you need it or if you're going to put it back in. We're obviously going to have a different air conditioner and mount it in a different spot, so ours doesn't go back in. But well, gaps look good. Space looks good. You can see it's on a slight angle leaning forward at the bottom. And intercooler. I think it's probably important to point out these are bone stock factory fans. They're nothing special. They're the original electric fans off the car. So they're no special aftermarket slim one thing or anything like that yeah as Tobe said they're just original um, factory fans the reason I kept them is because they um, flow about 4000 CFM which is pretty good uh, I haven't found an aftermarket one that does the same there's some are close but they're a lot larger and they're too hard to fit in so this gaps are nice, radiator's in, intercooler's on, everything's perfect here. We've come up with the uh, radiator, top radiator hose, just a 90 degree with a dip in it, into a tube and straight into a 90. I'll, uh, the 90 on this was a little bit wide, so I'm going to try and find one with a 
a closer turn so it fits a lot better but at the moment that fits fine which also leaves enough room for the uh, the intercooler piping to go on which tucks down there nicely gives us a bit of room down there so they don't touch And it actually looks all neat. Okay, so hey, how many moustache? Tobes has gone over and had a shave. He's got, got the, the X Men moustache. The X Men Wolverine Merv Hughes moustache ready for the start up. We'll give it a crank. Make sure we've got some oil pressure. All right, oil pressure. Is there oil light went out now we'll uh, no. plug everything back in, plug in the coils. coils are plugged in water's full where's my relay relays in up there is there a relay there yeah there's another relay no 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 a small one no a small one there. Yeah, there should be what well, is you already plug it back in no. oh, there it is all right fuel pump relay fuel pump relay Okay, Sorry. let's give it a let's give it a kick and see how she sounds. Fire it up.
Okay, so she's been outside and got washed. She's ready to go to the exhaust shop to get the exhaust put on it. And uh, after that, she'll go to dyno. So moving along nicely. So 50 cell cats. Cell cats. Stainless steel. V band clamps. 304 stainless. 3 force muffler and the resonator We've got the original extractors well made for this car two inch primaries into a four inch collector and then we've just got the new exhaust system getting made for it. It's got a couple of 50 cell cats that run down a three and a half inch stainless tube. And it's got the um, V bands all the way through it. So we've got the V bands to drop the back out. It's got the V bands either side of the cats. So, and then we've got the um, resonator. And then as you saw, the exhaust will get sat on the back of that and go in the car. So, should be ready to be picked up this afternoon. So a couple of X-Force exhausts into a resonator and then down into your X-pipe and then on to the extractors. So it's got a bunch of V-bands on it so it's very easy to pull apart. Uh, looks pretty good. Let's have a listen to it. Well that heat's quiet. That's bloody brilliant. Yeah. Okay, last stage. She's over at the dyno shop now getting dynoed. Probably take two or three days to get back. Hopefully, uh, we're looking for around 900, 1,000 rear wheel horsepower. Um, when it was on the uh, the engine dyno, it was uh, on a, with carby and not forced induction. She made 553 horsepower. So, uh, with one atmospheric pressure, I think it raises twice the amount that we got. So, 553, 1100. Um, we'll see how it goes. Other than that, come back, set the ride height with the shocks, uh, take it for a drive, and see how she goes. So. Can't wait for that to happen. We'll show you some uh, dyno figures from the dyno shop where she is at now. Uh, next episode, once we've got uh, some video back from them, um, we weren't able to go over ourselves because of this COVID uh, lockdown that's going on. So the boys are kind enough to take a few videos over there for us that we can use and show you guys how it worked. So uh, look, thanks for all the support and uh, appreciate all the, the messages. If you haven't already liked and subscribed, please go do so. It helps the channel out, helps us out. And uh, we'll see you next time with some uh, dino figures.